A very good day everyone today you're joining with the aero technicians youtube channel today i'm going to break down the stages of becoming an aircraft maintenance engineer so without further ado let's get to it so our first one is schooling well there are two types of schools in order to become an aircraft maintenance engineer one is called an approved school and the second one can be a modular course programs. So what are the difference between an approved school and a modular program? Well, an approved school is an approved school by a civil aviation authority of that country. And a modular course is not approved by a civil aviation authority in that country. So what are the pros and cons? Well, if you take an approved school upon graduation, you'll have to show only three years or two years of experience to get your basic license. But in a, a non-modular course, if you are upon graduation, you just have to show five years of experience to become an aircraft maintenance engineer or to get your basic license. So before going into our next stage, I would also like to tell you about the modules. So if you're going to be a B1.1, which is a mechanical engineer in, avi in aircraft, or B2, which is an avionics engineer in aircrafts as well. So these exams have 13 modules when it comes to B1.1, and you have to show 75 and above on each module in order to satisfy the first requirement in getting your basic license. And also, before going into the next stage, I would strongly recommend you to have your logbook or the cap 741 in your hand because that's where you're going to log everything in the next phase. So the second stage is your basic experience. So where do you have to get your basic experience and how long have, have you got to have your basic experience? So the duration depends solely on your school, whether if it's an approved school or a modular program if it's an approved school you just roughly have to take three years of experience and if it is a, a modular program you have to show five years of experience so this uh, experience can be filled in a one part 145 MRO which is a base maintenance environment and also all the all the maintenance tasks you do you have to filling fill it fill them in a logbook which is also called CAP 741, which I mentioned earlier. So where to get this logbook? You can contact your civil aviation of your country and then get a logbook reserved for you. And then after your basic experience, now you got uh, your modules ready and you got your basic experience ready. Let it be from a part 147 or a part 66 modular course program. You have your experience ready. Now you have to get your EASA form 19 which I will be showing in a minute. So this document is EASA form 19. The first part requires your information or the applicants and second part requires your employer's details and the next part about your uh, license type, aircraft type and followed by avionics ratings. So this is EASA form 19. So, when everything is done, as I said, you graduated, you got your uh, logbook filled, you got your YASA Form 19, now you send these documents into your civil aviation. And now, upon reviewing your documents, they will send you a blank AML. A blank AML means a blank aircraft maintenance license with an, without a type rating endorse on it so also a point to be marked which is EASA is a body which have different member states so EASA doesn't give you a license but one of its member states does we for an example you got uh, under EASA you got Italy you got Malta so these two countries are different member states so in order to per, get a, a license you shouldn't send your uh, documents to EASA itself you can do it 
with your civil aviation in your country. So, and then there are a few requirements in order to get a blank AML, which is you have to be minimum of 18 years old. So that being said, let's move on to our third uh, stage, which is the type rating. So now you have a blank AML. Can you sign off an aircraft? No, you can't because there's two things missing in the puzzle. First one being your type rating. So your type rating is divided into two parts, which is your practical training and your uh, exam examination. So what is a type rating? A type rating is an overall detail course on your aircraft of your choice or the or what your MRO needs you to have. So this type rating should be directly approved by the competent authority and you will have two stages a, a practical training session and also an examination now with the type rating you have to be really careful in order before going for a type rating you need to contact your um, civil aviation or your competent authority and also with the uh, with the part 147 that you're going to get your type rating you can get your type rating with a part 147 so why did i say you need to talk with both parties you know why because we had a issue with one of my workmates they they were working in one member state and they wanted to convert their license into another con uh, member state so there uh, there was an issue arose only because of the schools they had because the, this uh, member state a doesn't approve the type rating given by the member state b so there was an issue so it's better to contact the two member states and also your type training organization before getting a type rating so you have your blank license in hand you have your type rating in your hand you got everything ready to go is it enough no you still have to have your on the job training which is our final and the last stage of this process so number four is your on the job training so usually an ojt is given on your first type rating and you have to fill in your logbook again which is given by the mro or the computer authority you fill in your logbook and then you send send them before sending it you have to compile your blank AML which is aircraft maintenance license and your type rating certificate and your on job training logbook and you compile them all send it to your computer authority and then you will be given a full EASA aircraft maintenance license now you can sign off for a section of an aircraft or um, make a few sections of the aircraft also some companies have this oral examination uh, also on the on job training uh, period where you have to do an oral exam with your company in order to get the company approval so once you have a type rated a type rating endorsed part 66 license you can start your career as an aircraft maintenance engineer so guys to sum up everything you got four stages your schooling depending on two types of schools and then you have to get your basic experience and then your type rating and your own job training and then you compile them all you send to civil aviation you get your license so these are the four basic stages on becoming an aircraft maintenance engineer so if you like my video please do subscribe share it with your friends share the knowledge and if i missed anything uh, drop them down in the comment section below and i will be with you guys with another video next week so till then keep fixing